Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. This private member's bill brought forward by the Honourable Member for Coventry North West, which was inspired by the Daily Mirror campaign to find an organ donor for a little boy from Cheshire who we have heard so much about this afternoon, Max Johnson, as the Honourable Members for Barnsley Central and many others have said, has my full support. In preparing for this debate, I was saddened to learn of just how many people lose their lives due to the lack of a suitable donor. In adopting this bill, England would have a similar system to Wales, essentially an opt-out system, where the consent would be presumed unless otherwise stated. There is already overwhelming public support for organ donation. According to the NHS British Transplant website, over 80% of adults in England say that they would definitely or would consider donating their organs. But only 37% of the population in the UK have actually registered as a donor on the NHS organ donor register. When the then nine-year-old boy, Max Johnston, Whilst, sorry, the then nine-year-old boy, Max Johnson, was the inspiring story behind the Daily Mirror's campaign, at any one time there are over 6,000 people waiting to have life-saving transplants. I spoke to one such person, a chap in my local West Cumberland hospital, during his dialysis treatment in our new renal unit just last month. There are so many desperately sad accounts of lives being lost families destroyed and children without their parents. The Johnson family spent almost eight months on a transplant ward. In their words, it was a roller coaster of a year, at times worrying that their son's weight had dropped too low to continue on the transplant list. After 196 days of waiting, a tragically fatal car crash resulted in a suitable heart donation from a little girl, Kira Ball. And I echo the comments of the members from Barnsley Central and also the very emotional speech from my honourable friend, the member for North Devon, in their admiration for Kira's family. Being a mum of four daughters myself, I was devastated to learn of other accounts, particularly Jade Gulliver's sister's account. At just 27, Jade, mum to two little boys, died waiting for a liver transplant. She had viral hepatitis. Her sister said, you hear about transplants on the telly, but you never expect it to happen to someone you know. She kept getting sicker and sicker. I can't explain what it was like, waiting every day for a phone call that never came. We take the boys to the beach and the bench we have in Jade's memory for birthdays and anniversaries, and we show them pictures. Jade's sister goes on to say, I will be the first to admit that before this tragedy, I was almost ignorant to organ donation. Now I want to do everything in my power to prevent this from happening so that no more families have to go through what our family has been through and is still going through. Now, it's not at all difficult to opt in. In fact, whilst preparing for my speech last night, I decided that to speak with any conviction, to be in an honest position to persuade the country to take the decision to donate, I at least need to ensure that I have joined the register. So that's exactly what I did. But what dawned on me is actually for me, at that time, working late in my office here in Parliament whilst enjoying a mug of coffee and looking forward to getting back up to Cumbria at the weekend to see my family and friends. How relatively relaxed I felt about making a decision which would only come into action after my death. Online, I made a choice to donate all the bits of me that could ever be useful and was rewarded by my choice by being informed that my decision could actually improve or save up to nine lives. I could instead have individually chosen my heart, lungs, kidney, liver, corneas, pancreas, tissue or small bowel, or any combination of the above. After registering, the website encourages three next steps to make clear the decision to loved ones, with advice on how to introduce the conversation, 
explaining that it could improve or even save a life, and to let them know why and how I had arrived at this decision. Now, I've had this conversation many times at home. It's a popular topic over our kitchen table with my four daughters, and personally, I have a very positive outlook on life and understand that the only certainty in life is death. <coughs> but it is much more difficult to have that conversation with my husband. We are all very different. There is one thing for sure. If the worst had happened, if my daughters and husband or my mum and dad had been forced to make that decision shortly after my sudden death, it would have been very difficult for them. For me last night, registering was a simple choice, made without any doubt in my mind. But it is important to note that of the half a million deaths each year in this country, only around 5,000 people die in circumstances or of conditions which mean their organs could be considered for transplantation. In light of the 6,100 plus people currently waiting for that phone call, waiting to be told of a suitable donor that could improve or save their life, I'm sure the Minister will agree with me that this bill will significantly improve the chances of finding a suitable donor. It is a tragedy that today three people will die because of the lack of a donor. This bill seeks to improve and save lives, but it also seeks to take out some of the decision-making at a time when families are suffering the worst possible ordeal of losing a loved one. There are nearly 25 million people on the NHS organ donor register. Such high rates of voluntary donation should be applauded, mm -hmm. but I do realise that there will be people for a whole range of different religious or other reasons who actually do not want to become full or even partial donors. And that choice must be reflected. I hope that the Minister can reassure this House that opting out would be possible under this Bill. We know that following public awareness campaigns, the numbers of registrations have significantly increased. In fact, I hope that the debate this afternoon will result in that significant increase. But it is still not enough to prevent the unnecessary deaths of, on average, three people each and every day. In conclusion, Mr Deputy Speaker, given the thousands of lives that are needlessly lost and thinking of all those who continue to suffer and the inevitable devastation to their family and friends, in the belief that opting out will save and improve so many lives, I will be supporting this bill through its parliamentary stages and hope that colleagues across this House will do the same. Yeah. Minister Jackie Doyle-Price. Yeah.